Arkansas basketball is back in action tonight. We're going to get you ready for it. My name is Curtis Wilkerson. I'm joined by my better thirds, if you will, Scotty Borland and, and Andrew Ellis. Welcome to the pregame pod at the Palace. We are live from the Natty State Sports Studios here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Really excited. Just a little bit of a teaser of some of the other things that we've got planned for you guys. Uh, but right now, we're going to talk about this basketball game that's coming up tonight against Texas A&M. Man, Arkansas is uh, struggling. I think that's probably fair to say. They're 9-7 and seven overall. They're 0-3 in SEC play. All three of those losses have come by double digits, fellas. It's been rough on them. Uh, Texas A&M, they're coming to town 8 o'clock tonight at Bud Walton Arena. It's on SEC Network. Uh, the Aggies have underperformed a little bit, too. I mean, they're only 10-6 and six on the year. They had really high expectations like Arkansas. They look like they might have figured some things out over the weekend. We watched this Kentucky game together. They won that one in overtime. Uh, boy, we'll see how it goes. Honestly, Buzz Williams has been a really difficult matchup for Eric Melson. I felt like is. in the past, yeah. right? Um, and I feel like Musk gets a little angry at us when we ask him <laughs> about that, but he's four and five against Buzz. Uh, the interesting thing about it, right, is, is both teams have held serve at home. You know, AM hasn't won in Fayetteville during that time. Arkansas certainly hasn't won in College Station, but it seems like the Aggies kind of own uh, the, the Razorbacks and SEC tournament play. They've eliminated them the last couple of years. Um, I, I want to take you guys real quick back to last year before we get into this preview. Uh, if you guys recall, uh, the weather outside was frightful in Fayetteville, right? And it was like a reduced <laughs> crowd. Texas A&M had all kinds of trouble getting to Fayetteville. I think their plane was diverted. They had to bus or something. Maybe you guys remember the details. Uh, but then Arkansas, somewhat surprisingly, kind of kind of dominated that game. What do you guys remember about that one? I remember... Um... I feel like Arkansas got some good performances in the front court, if if I remember that right. 100%. I feel like it was, I don't want to say it was like a block party, but I feel like, um, and I could be totally wrong, because I haven't, I didn't look at the Ken Palm You're not, that score. was the title of one of my stories, I'm almost positive. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Mitchells did a good job on Henry Coleman, and did a, maybe a serviceable job on the glass at least. Um, but yeah, you're right, like, going back to Buzz Williams for a second, like, the game when you know the year that Moses Moody was here, they needed a three in the last minute to beat A and M oh, at home. Yeah, that was a really good team, that. and Texas A and M always brings you know really good teams in here. And I think Buzz Williams is probably one of the best coaches schematically in the league. So he's you know different game planned it for for different games, and he's he's always you know it seems like he's always got a pretty good plan for Arkansas at least. Well, the thing that sticks out to me is like this matchup, it seems like the records of the teams don't really matter. I know that's a cliche we always say in during football when rivalries come into town, but I think back to when AM was really struggling under Buzz his first couple of years, and they still were playing Arkansas itself. And we talked about some of those games. There was one game where Devo made some kind of play. I want to say it was his freshman year where he made a huge play and Arkansas helped Arkansas beat a bad AM team late in the year, I maybe March. Um, and so in last year's game was one we probably expected to be a lot closer and ended up being a blowout. And so We'll see if Arkansas is going to kind of hold up their end of the portion of this, if a bad Arkansas team can make it a lot closer with this A&M team. Uh, Arkansas is at home, and so it's like, again, we've been saying this a ton, where it's like it's served up on a platter where it's like, hey, if this is the time you want to turn things around, now would be the time to do it. Uh, you're at home. The weather is crazy, and so a and is probably not too psyched about coming in here. They're also coming off of a huge win, yes. which I think yeah. is something that's important to talk about. I mean, if a and loses Saturday, which they played Kentucky at home, there's no shame in losing to Kentucky, but if they lose that game, they're 0-3 in SEC play. This is turns into a game where it's like both of these teams kind of have to win. So they're, they're coming in here wounded, too. And so I'm wondering if a and kind of took a little bit of an exhale, and so maybe Arkansas is catching them at the right time. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I would like to think that at home in Bud Walton Arena in the middle of a snowstorm right after they just beat <laughs> Kentucky, that has to be the best time to be to play a team. And so we'll see if it turns out that way. But I think the, you know, we'll talk to it about it a little bit. But I think for me, it just comes down to what version of this Arkansas team we're gonna see. And so yeah, your guess is as good as ours. We're we're gonna <laughs> just throw stuff at a wall and hope we can find out because that's what it is with this team. We don't we just know we have no idea what's gonna show up. Um, and really with both teams in this matchup, this this rivalry has been kind of fun because both coaches are so high level. You do, you know, the the teams are going to come in prepared. It's going to be a fun matchup. And so I look forward to another chapter in the Musselman uh, Buzz Williams rivalry. I mean, if if you want to try to start turning this thing around, beating the team that just beat Kentucky, which is, you know, probably pound for pound the best, you know, the most talented team in the league, that would be a really, really nice place to start if you could do that. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. I, I mean, 
honestly, like either Arkansas needs to to flip that annual switch if it if it's going to happen, or maybe A and M does need that letdown and then build up uh, some momentum for a weekend home game. Exactly, Another weekend home like, game. There's you know, one way South to get Carolina. back on track, and it, it's not going to happen until they just figure one out. And it doesn't have right. to be pretty at all, but you get over the hump. Um, you know, and I think they're past the point where showing. I don't know how much good it's going to do. Uh, if they play a tight game and wind up losing again at home, like they've they've kind of run out of that margin of error, so it's almost like you know put up or shut up time. They've got to get over that hump and and really build some momentum. But then you still wonder, you know, if it's going to carry over because we haven't seen that consistency uh, from this team. But uh, to talk about Texas A and M for a minute, I mean, I I don't know about you guys, but when we were sitting there watching them play Kentucky right outside here on Saturday. What stood out to me is those dudes are heavy on the offensive Monsters glass i mean it's glass, crazy yeah. uh just looking at some of their numbers here i mean they're they're number one in the country in offensive rebounding percentage they get nearly 19 offensive rebounds per game that's first in the country too uh that's absurd and it's not just their big guys like their guards getting there and, and rebound that thing too um arkansas has had some struggles closing out possessions on the defensive glass you got the best offensive rebounding team in the country coming in here and we'll see, like, is Arkansas going to be trying to zone these guys? They should because they can't shoot. Uh, but whenever you're zoning somebody, like, rebounding becomes a major issue. So uh, finding a body, boxing out, playing physical, basically doing all the things they haven't done so far on the yeah. backboards, that's a must, man, because you can force, you know, tough shots and, and you can contest. But if you're not closing out possessions and giving up second-chance opportunities, um, you're toast. So – uh, you know, that really stands out to me, but maybe outside of that, like if Arkansas is going to be in a position to win this game at the end tonight, uh, where does it start? What do they have to do? Maybe Scott, do you take that one first? Yeah, I think the, obviously the, the main guy that you got to pay attention to, he's going to be at the top of the scouting reports, Wade Taylor, it's right? Like he was preseason SEC player of the year. Right. And so I think you, you come in kind of understanding that he's talented enough that you may have a really good game plan for him. He's probably still going to get his, if that makes sense. Um, I think your best bet is trying to tie one of their hands behind their back. And I think that left hand is is literally <laughs> Tyrese Radford. He had 28 and nine the other day against Kentucky. Yeah. It was just super tough. He had five offensive boards. And I can get into that more in a minute. But Jeez. you mentioned the offensive rebounding. He's he's got 12 and three league games. That's and he's, that, and he's he's six three, one ninety. <laughs> and that's just want to toughness. Mm -hmm. Um you're probably going to hear that his nickname is Boots tonight because he's so tough. But like Arkansas is going to have to account for that. They haven't been tough. They haven't had any grit in these league games. And Tyrese Radford kind of embodies that that toughness. Um, but I think one thing Arkansas has got to do for him, it, it, he's a guy that wants to get downhill, I feel like. He's taken almost 13 two-point field goal attempts in league games, and he's shooting 40% from three. And so he's gonna he, he's gonna do his best to keep you off balance, but I think first and foremost he wants to try to get downhill to the rim, maybe pull up in that mid range area. Well, I think you know we talk about how different this Arkansas team is to years past. I think if this were two years ago, I would have zero doubt in this type of a matchup where you have a team who is successful in one very specific area like rebounding. Arkansas is usually good under Musselman at figuring out those things. If you have a team that comes in here and they're a high steal team, Arkansas is probably not going to let them get a ton of steals. If they have a guy who's averaging thirty. Arkansas usually doesn't let them pop off. So I think a team like AM who revolves around two guards who take a lot of their shots and rebounds a lot of those misses. I mean, those guards shoot like 38% combined. I mean, so mm -hmm. you look at the shooting numbers from those guys, they're they're a lot more dangerous than the numbers indicate. But, you know, to our to y'all's point, it's kind of that's their formula of have these guards who were kind of heat check guys who score a lot for them and handle a lot of that scoring load, like Wade Taylor, and they're cleaning up their misses when they miss. And so it's a formula that's really worked for them. But if this were a, a typical Arkansas team who's defending the perimeter the way they have in the past and has that toughness and that dog to to make those matchups hard, I'd be like, man, this is an easy matchup, especially in, in Bud Walton Arena. But with what we've seen this year, I have zero reason to believe Arkansas is going to show up in the rebounding department against an elite rebounding team. I mean, we've seen them rebound well, but it's mostly against teams that don't do it at a high level. I mean, they held their own against teams like North Carolina and Purdue, but it's not like they pounded them on the glass. So I just, I don't... I'm not feeling great about this matchup for Arkansas. You know the uh, you know the picture that floats around on the internet of like the X-ray, but it's got the dog where the heart is. Yeah. Where the dog ain't got that yeah. right Where the dog? Yeah, we, somebody we need needs that. to find that exactly. Because <laughs> somebody's um, gonna have to keep Tyrese. Rat like there are a bunch of guys on that A&M team that can get on the glass. Radford, like I mentioned earlier, he's six three one ninety, so it's not like he's super physically imposing, but he's put together really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't, I don't think you can stress enough like just he wants to rebound 
And so whoever is gets the defensive assignment for him has got to match that toughness and the just the want to rebound that, that Radford's got. Let me ask you this. Is Tyrese Radford, did he miss his calling of being from like a small town in the state of Arkansas and playing for Arkansas? Like he, he fits the criteria of like the kind of guards Arkansas's had for the last decade. These, well, I mean, he's left-handed, right? Yes. Either we were left-handed, kind of in that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, range, <laughs> gritty, can shoot but not really shoot, like maybe a streaky shooter. It, he's, he does feel like he's at the wrong was, place. He <laughs> was built in a lab to be born in Little Rock, Arkansas, and end up going to Arkansas as a force. But Radford's a guy that must loves. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, of course he loves him. He recruits all the guys they're that are voting, just like him. You know, they're voting for like SEC Player of the Year type stuff. He's probably a guy that, that Eric has considered mm-hmm. um, in the past, and I just I wonder who that – who's going to get that defensive assignment, whether it's like, is it a Tremont, Mark, you go lefty on lefty potentially. Um, maybe you just, maybe a lefty just kind of just intrinsically knows what a left, another lefty is going right. to do. I don't know, but that's, that's something I'm going to be watching pretty heavily. Yeah. Cause you, you got to think, and we'll, we'll get into the, we'll move on to the Arkansas side of this thing here <laughs> in just a second, but like talking about matchups, then, you know, who guards Wade Taylor, like on the surface, you would think Devo gets the first crack there, but Taylor's kind of given him the business in the past, even when Devo was playing at his best offensively. So I don't know, you know, I know people are excited about blocker, the defender, but that's a tough assignment it to is. give a true freshman. So I, I don't know. And, and that's why maybe I wonder if they're going to try to flash more of the zone or, or mix it up, yeah. whatever. But the interesting thing about Texas A&M is I haven't checked this morning, but I checked late last night on Kempom and, and they're number 22 in the country and adjusted offensive efficiency but it's almost fool's gold because a lot of that is because they're so good on the offensive glass. They right. can't shoot it a lick. I mean, they're shooting twenty seven percent, fifty in three point shooting. Yeah, they're twenty seven percent from three. I think they're like three hundred and thirty first or something in, in effective field goal percentage. Like, there's a lot of misses for them to clean up. So yeah. if you're Arkansas, like, you're gonna have the opportunity to close out possessions. You just got to go do it. Um, I don't know, man. We'll we'll see what happens. But let's let's turn to the Arkansas side of things here real quick because that's probably the bigger question. You just have no idea what you're going to get here. So, Scotty, I mean, what's at the top of your list? Like, just on things you're – like, what are you looking for? What are you watching for with Arkansas tonight? Man, there's a lot of stuff. And I, I narrowed it down to just one. And I think it, it might just be because I'm, um, I'm, I'm just high on Caleb Battle. But I, I need to – we need a pulse check there, I think. Big time. I've got it written down, nine points in his last four games, and he's one of eight from three in that span. So he went for what eighteen against was it Abilene Christian I think or yeah one of the um, yeah it was or, Ab- Abilene yeah, Christian that's right and then mm-hmm. he's I think he's yeah he hasn't scored I think more than four points since and shots not there um, need to need to get that guy going man there I mean you look at Arkansas's offensive numbers inside the league they're dreadful yeah I mean close to last if not last in offensive efficiency three point shooting two point shooting free throw percentage it's all bad that guy can help you pick those numbers right. up and, and the one thing them, we thought they were going to do is score offense. yeah exactly <laughs> you know? um i think yeah i think he's just he's got to find a way to get out of this rut a little bit um and I, I i really have missed him just putting his head down trying to get to the rim drawing contact getting to the free throw he's not even getting to the free throw line anymore yeah. which is the most bothersome thing um he was a guy that was a how he was like a high fouls drawn per 40 guy you know early in the year a big FTA guy, big if you will. FTA guy. <laughs> Eric likes that, and he they're, loves they're, them. They're missing that so much. Um, maybe like I don't know where he is confidence wise. Um, obviously, in a game like this too, he's going to have to defend somebody. So we'll see, like if he's on the floor, we'll see who he defends. Um, but I think if he if he just finds himself again on the offensive end, I think Arkansas Arkansas stands a, a pretty good chance. My eyes are on one man for various reasons. Trevin Brazil. I hope you didn't tune into the Natty State Sports. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> inaugural John Neighbors show because there was there we we, we discussed you a lot, um, but it's like once an hour I feel. Like, I mean, yeah. literally, when every question was like well, Trevin Brazil, but uh, Trevin Brazil is an interesting one. One because when he plays well, Arkansas seems to play well as well, and I think yeah. offensively he definitely takes this team to another level. His over under for points tonight is eight and a half. He if he I think he has to score in double digits. I think he has to give some type of a threat for other teams to deal with. I mean, whether even if it's just spot-up three-point shooting, which we've seen him be successful at in the past. I mean, in, against Duke, that's pretty much how he changed that game, was hitting four or five threes. Um, and so I, I think it's time for him to kind of come into form a little bit. You know, going back to the preseason, Eric Musselman kind of talked about that. They were expecting it to be a little bit of a process with Brazil. They weren't worried about having him full go in October, November, whenever. They kind of wanted him to hit his peak 
right about now. And True. so obviously it hasn't come to fruition yet, but I mean, we know how talented this guy is. We know how good he can be and how he can change things. I think for this Arkansas team, we're talking about if, is Arkansas going to find any sort of identity or stuff they can build on moving forward. I think Trevor in Brazil, that over eight and a half points, it's minus 140 right now, which means people have been hitting it. We're counting on you, Trevin. Double digit points. Let's uh let's let's make it happen tonight and let's change this game. Maybe yeah. a maybe a game where like you're going into it expecting physicality. Maybe that lights a fire in him. They're like if I want to be on the floor, if I care at all and I want to be on the floor, I've got to kind of get dirty and find the dog inside of me, so to speak. And you know, he's he needs to be on the glass heavy tonight. Yeah. We're also on firm Trevin Brazil hair watch. Yes. His hair has been a, a big story <laughs> this year. Saturday, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I literally, he looked like one of those scientists who had just yeah. gotten blown up and it was, and then also dyed it red. I bet him and Graham both change it up. Tonight. I think they will yeah. too. And look, that's another thing I'm watching Jalen Graham's hair. <laughs> that's why we're going to get to the game early tonight, guys. We'll have you, we'll have the reports about that kind of stuff. That's what you want. Um, we're going to let you know what Trevor Brazil's hair look like, looks like, and he's going to score 10 points tonight. Go ahead and book I hope that. so. I, and, you know, for me, honestly, like I'm just, we talk about pulse and, you know, physicality and all that. Like, I'm just trying to see if this team has any pride left in them. And, yeah. I hate to say that, but like the last game I watched at Bud Walton Arena is the worst game I watched at Bud Walton Arena ever. And I think the final score is indicative of that. Uh, they folded, man. And you just you just can't have that. And sometimes, you know, things aren't going to go your way. Maybe, you you know, you just fall flat on the road or whatever. But you can't do that at Bud. And I don't know what to expect from the atmosphere tonight. I mean, the, the weather's terrible outside. Uh, the roads are slick. And, and I think people are frustrated and, and maybe starting to lose a little bit of interest in this team right now. Um, Arkansas has got to give them a reason to come and, and a reason to stay and be excited. So um, I, I'm definitely looking for that. And I also want to see Layden Blocker and Joseph Pinion. Like, is, is that an aberration or is it a thing now? You yeah. know, like, like, what are we going to have there? Are those guys going to be inserted into the starting lineup? Um, is it going to be a deal where they play three minutes and you don't see them the rest of the night? Are you going to give them a look? And then, and then how does that work? Does that mean you're a zone team now defensively? Or do you try to go back to man? Like, there's just so many questions that are unanswered with this Arkansas team right now that uh, man you could probably just draw any number of things out of a hat and you know have something interesting to look at it's it's just uh it's a mess and you know we talk about like you know some of the hibernating hogs right now like where are these guys at like I think about a dude like Chandler Lawson yeah um no. man the game yeah, where I mean, you need some physicality and some defensive rebounding he's been playing like two minutes a game here late like I don't know has he done something like fall completely behind in the pecking order to Makai and, and Jalen Graham and those guys? I mean, obviously he has, but I don't know. I might be giving him a look if if I was Arkansas, but we'll uh we'll see. It, it's been really interesting. And I think, you know, if you if you take a look at some of the specials over on on Bet Saracen, like it's reflective of what's going on <laughs> yeah, with this no team doubt. right now. Like this stuff is crazy. Uh, you know, first of all, Arkansas is a they're a three and a half point dog at at home and to me, like anytime you can get Arkansas plus money at, at Bud Walton, like it's that's very enticing. And I know, you know, we kind of said that before the Auburn game and that, that didn't play out too well. We didn't kind of say it. I texted like seven people and I was like, dude, bet on Arkansas at I home. I remember man. during that game, you were like, Arkansas's live number is uh, eight and a half. And I didn't text you back, but I wanted to say like, I still don't like that. Number. Man. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's tough to have a lot of, a lot of confidence, honestly, in this team right now. Uh, to win a game against anybody because I'm not sure how much confidence they have in themselves. And that can change from game to game. We'll, we'll see what happens tonight. But, uh, yeah, some of these are are really crazy. Have you guys taken a look at those? Like, what, what would you say is maybe your best bet or the one that's really got your eye there? The one that really caught my eye, and it's a guy that we haven't seen much of lately, is Keon Minifield. They've got his, they've got his prop is over three and a half points, over nine and a half minutes played. Well, like, those go would, hand in hand. Too. I mean, I would think that Minifield can score more than four points in a game. Like if he's he needs to if Arkansas is going to win. Yeah, yeah, he definitely needs to. And maybe you know there were stretches in that Auburn game, especially when they were in it, when he was like making the offense go, mm -hmm. or he was you know finding guys. He was finding TV in transition. Um, really did a really good job of like pushing the ball up the floor. I think and go back to going to pace for a second. You know what you're getting with A and M in terms of pace. Arkansas probably doesn't want to play in the mud with him, yeah. if I had to guess. Minifield's the pace changer, right? That's a great point. He's the, the only maker. guy capable of changing pace, yeah, apparently. That's a great and, point. you know, if he can get a couple of transition buckets, you're right there. Now you just need him to stay on the floor for a few minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I like that prop a lot. Well, and speaking of guys, I mean, that, we talked about how Saracen, they're basically just, we don't know who's going to play. So it's tough mm -hmm. to even project totals Another of points point. and stuff like yeah. that. It's like, who's going to play? <laughs> the one guy that, 
didn't play a ton against Florida that I'm pretty confident will play is Devontae Davis, Devontae yeah. Devo Davis. Our guy, it's been quite the journey with Devo. I mean, it's it could not have more ups and could not have more downs. It has been <laughs> quite the journey with Devo Davis. He's due for But he's up. our guy. I, I love Devo. I'll always be a huge Devo supporter. Over three and a half points, over zero and a half assists. And doesn't have the minutes on there, but basically he just has to play for 15 minutes and just be there. He didn't score the other day, the other day against Florida. I think this is the kind of game that you know Devo knows he has to show up. I mean, everybody should know they kind of have to show up, but I just count on Devo to play 25 minutes because he seems to be the one guy Eric Musselman doesn't fluctuate with when he plays him and how he you know deploys him. So I expect Devo to be on the floor, and he doesn't even have to be that good. Just score a couple buckets, accidentally dish out one assist. We can make it happen. Let's do it. It's at plus he, odds also. Plus 125. All these guys are plus odds. He could be below odd. average and get to that. Mm-hmm. And it, that's what's crazy yeah. to me. And that's why I, exactly. when I look at these, I, I look at Caleb Battle and it's like, you know, the Monstars didn't come and take away his basketball talents. Like it's it's over one and a half points and two and a half rebounds at plus 230. That's crazy. I mean, that and Battle has be, shown in the past that he's, he's, <laughs> he's a good willing to get in there and get a little dirty on the glass. And you know it's an emphasis. And, yeah. you know, in a game like this, I mean, Come on. That's another like it, one where if he plays you know, 15 minutes, he probably is gonna is gonna have enough or have a chance to hit that one. But watch right. him have 23 points and two rebounds. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's uh let's wrap this thing up, fellas. So, real quick, let's just go rapid fire here uh around the table. What is gonna happen tonight? Is Arkansas gonna win? Or are they gonna cover? Like what what are we looking at? What are we expecting? Scotty, what do you got? I think Texas AM wins and covers, but I think it, it could be one of those deals where Arkansas hangs in the game. And somebody's going to cold takes expose this probably. Um, they, I, I feel like it'll be close, and then maybe A and M covers due to free throws or you know something along those lines. This is going to be an ugly game, and I think everyone, you know, A and M played so well against Kentucky, and we watched that game together, and we were like, man, just looking at those two teams, it looks like a completely different level than Arkansas. I've been super optimistic. I mean, I've, I've, you know, been picking Arkansas to win all these games. I picked them to beat Auburn at home uh, two weeks ago. They're going to eventually win a game. I think I think this is a game. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be a snow game where I don't think either team is going to play well. I think this is the type of game where Arkansas kind of has to win. That desperation is going to come out a little bit. I see Arkansas winning like a 64 to 61 type of thing Ooh. where it's just both teams are like three for 17 from three. Just ugly. Um, we'll see if Arkansas is able to – maybe the glasses. If Arkansas can just stay – relative in that rebounding department because you know in a game like that that's going to be low scoring that i'm projecting you can't get out rebounded by 12 you yeah. know in a game like yeah. that the, the possessions come come down like that but i you know this is an a&m team that loves to lay eggs i mean you know it's not are they played so well saturday but given what they've done this year and really even in years past it's like they, they are not consistent throughout the year i mean we're talking about a team that lost by 15 at home to lsu less than two weeks ago now i know arkansas lost by 170 at home to arkansas or to auburn that same day <laughs> But, I mean, it's not like this A&M team is some juggernaut that Arkansas is going to have to climb this. I think that the these two teams are a lot closer than their seasons to this point indicate, obviously. And so, I, you know, yeah. do I think it's going to be some resounding moment where Arkansas comes through and, like, turns their season around? No. But I think they're going to win an ugly game, and I think it's going to be a decent place to start. And we'll see how they come out this Saturday. If you're Arkansas, like, you've got – you're way past the point of, like, caring how it looks now. Like yeah, you just, yeah. you've got to get you. If you can, if you have to win games by a junior high score, then you have to do it. That's when I, this program is at its best over yeah. the years. Is when they're winning those those dirty yeah. games. Those ones they have to really scratch and claw for. They're that's really kind of that's where that defense. identity yeah. is formed. Yeah. yeah. yeah here's, so. here's the thing, fellas. I my pessimism comes with I don't think Arkansas cares how it looks right now, and that's one of the biggest <laughs> problems, right? And and listen, if they hold Texas A and M in the sixties tonight, Andrew, then fried pickles are on me. Next time we go out for lunch, I, yeah. I just Curtis. Sure. All right, all right. Listen, uh, I mean, Curtis, look. You, the, the the fried pickles are mounting. Those all I'm going to say. This is our first show here on this platform, but people, the people know that behind closed doors, you owe me a lot of fried pickles over the years. Zach Eady did not score 20 and 10 against Arkansas when they came in here. I'm just saying. Listen, it might be a full meal of fried pickles, but no, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not the guy who's going to sit here and say that I'm completely out on this Arkansas team. But they're going to have to show me something, <laughs> yeah. something yeah. Uh, before I can get back on board. There, they got to they got to you know prove it before I can really buy in again. Um, I don't think it's going to be an Auburn type game. I think the streak of double digit losses is going to end. There you go. Um, come to but at I, some point. I don't, I don't, I don't see Arkansas winning this game and, and hopefully they prove me wrong and, and we can come back in here and talk about it uh, tomorrow or actually good segue there to get out of here tonight. 
uh, because we we did our yeah. little pregame pod here and, and it was enjoyable. But we got a lot going for you here at, uh, at Natty State Sports. And so make sure that you stay tuned in to what we got going on. If you haven't subscribed to all the channels, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, any social media, really, or check out our, our website, Natty State Sports. Dot com. Make sure you do that because we got a lot coming your way, a lot of coverage, and we're going to go live immediately following the final buzzer tonight to break all this down. And and hopefully for once we have a smile on and, and we're talking about an Arkansas win. I don't know. Arkansas we'll is O and O in the Natty State Sports era. I'm just saying. That's right. It, it's it's going to be weird for me. I think potentially going back to another post game again. I've, I haven't worked the last three games, so reintroduce yourself have, to yeah Moss. back in the employment yeah. <laughs> nice man <laughs> good being employed again <laughs> all right guys well good stuff appreciate it and uh make sure you're there for the the game tonight eight o'clock bud walton arena arkansas texas a&m if you're watching on tv sec network when that thing ends make sure you hop on check out our, our post game show over at nice state sports it's been curtis wilkerson scotty borderline andrew ellis and we'll catch you guys tonight <laughs>